Hello, this is your Algerian teacher, and welcome to Grow the Branches channel. Today we are going to revise pronouns. Pronouns may be classified in the following kinds. Personal, possessive, demonstrative, reflexive, interrogative, indefinite, relative, and reciprocal. A personal pronoun used instead of a noun or noun phrase primarily it is connected with a particular person in the grammatical sense. It takes place of specific nouns in the sentence in order to avoid the repetition of nouns and make an easy flow of sentences. Personal pronouns can refer to people, animals, places or objects, etc. They may take different forms depending on number, plural or singular, gender, feminine or masculine, or neuter and case, subjective and the objective case. Subject pronouns or nominative pronouns are I, you, he, she, it, we, you, they. Objective pronouns are me, you, him, her, it, us, you and them. Please look at the following examples. Patricia is playing video games. She is playing video games. She replaces the noun Patricia. Mark and I are good friends. Mark and I become we are good friends. Notice that the pronoun I is the only pronoun which is always capitalized anywhere in the sentence. Also, you can see in Mark and I, the subjective pronoun I comes last out of politeness. I didn't say I and Mark, but I said Mark and I to express politeness. In the objective case, we apply the same rule too. Maria gave my sister and me a letter. The objective pronoun me comes last also. Consider the difference between I and me in these examples. You can pause the video to tell the difference. We use I because it is subject, but we use me and it is object. Maria gave my sister and me a letter. Becomes she gave us a letter. Bob bought some flowers, or he bought them. The noun flowers is replaced with the objective pronoun them. Samir finished his homework. He finished it. We also use the objective pronoun when it is governed by a preposition. For example, Bill spoke to them. It is a present from me. Here the pronouns them and me take the objective case because they follow the preposition to and from. In formal English, the subjective or nominative form is used after the verb to be. It was I who did the work, but in informal English the objective form is frequently used. It's only me. The personal pronoun she is sometimes used for inanimate objects to express affection. England has done what she has promised to do. Queen Mary is a retired British ocean ship. She sailed primarily on the North Atlantic Ocean from 1936 to 1967. The pronoun it is used for things and animals. Look at the cat. Can you see it? He is typing a letter. He will send it tomorrow. It is used in some expressions of distance, time and weather conditions. It is just a few miles from here. It is 10 o'clock. It is raining. It is used in some expressions like it is difficult, it is easy, exciting, impossible, nice, strange, wise, wonderful, etc. It's impossible to go fishing by bad weather. It's nice to see you again. It is used with impersonal verbs like it appears, it sounds. For example, it says here that smoking is forbidden. One is a numeral. It can be an adjective when it precedes a noun, as in the example, the one man who could have saved the situation was dead. One 
can also be used as a pronoun. One cannot do the work of twenty. He is not one to be easily frightened. The two twins are so much alike that I cannot tell the one from the other. There was an old man and a young one. I prefer red roses to white ones. Possessive pronouns. You need to make the difference between possessive adjectives and possessive pronouns. Possessive adjectives take place before nouns. They are my, your, his, her, its, our, and their. Possessive pronouns replace nouns, and they are mine, yours, his, hers, ours, and theirs. That is my book. My, your, or his are possessive adjectives. They occur before the noun book. However, that book is mine or that book is yours. Mine is a possessive pronoun since it replaces the noun book. You cannot say this is my or this is mine book. Also, we say he is a friend of mine and not he is a friend of mine. The possessive pronouns are used in such phrases as my best wishes to you and yours from me and mine. Here, yours means your family and mine means my family. Demonstrative pronouns. Demonstrative pronouns, like all pronouns, are used without a noun. Demonstrative adjectives, however, always precede a noun. A demonstrative pronoun is a pronoun which we use in the sentence to point something specific, such as items in space or in time. Demonstrative pronouns can be either singular, this, that, or plural, these, those. The singular this and plural these demonstrative pronouns indicate that a person or persons or a thing or things is near to the speaker. And the singular that and plural those demonstrative pronouns indicate that a person or persons or a thing or things is far away from the speaker. This can be clearer through the following examples. This is smelling very bad. These smell very bad like a rotten egg. This and these represent the thing or some things close to the speaker. That is looking very nice. Those are very beautiful. That and those represent a thing or some things far away from the speaker. That is what I thought last year. This is what I think now. Let's practice. Can you identify when the demonstrative is adjective and when it is a pronoun? This is where I live. This is pronoun. Why? Because it takes the place of a noun. There is no noun after it. I want this book, not that book. Both demonstratives are adjectives because they are followed by a noun. Book. This is an excellent idea. That is a pronoun. Are those your sisters? It is a pronoun. Reflexive intensive pronouns. Reflexive and intensive pronouns are myself, yourself, himself, herself, itself, ourselves, yourselves, and themselves. Reflexive pronouns are used to indicate that the performer of an action is also the receiver of that action i.e. the subject and object of a verb are the same person. A reflexive pronoun can be a direct object or an indirect object. Look at the following example. He blamed himself for the failure in the competition. He, subject, himself, object. Subject and object are the same. She hurt herself for the group mistake. You have given yourselves a great deal of work. Yourselves here is an indirect object and work is the direct object. I am teaching myself Latin. I gave myself enough time to get prepared for this competition. The dog has hurt itself very badly. We have treated ourselves in a big hotel at this occasion. 
You can make this recipe yourselves at home. Kids are able to perform well themselves. Intensive pronouns are often used to emphasize the fact that the subject performs the action rather than someone else. And like the reflexive pronouns, which function as object, intensive pronouns either follow the subject or the object. In the following sentence, Frances is subject, prepares, verb, and it object. Frances herself prepares it, or Frances prepares it herself. The intensive pronoun herself can either follow the subject, Frances, or the object it. Both have the same meaning. Frances was the only one performing the action. Consider the following examples. I have cooked today's lunch myself. You yourself spent all the money. He himself will participate in the rally. She herself has written these lines. We ourselves won the game. They themselves helped the poor people. Have you written this book yourselves? Sometimes when the pronouns have the meaning of without assistance, we can also use or add by or all by. For example, Ahmed is studying by himself. The little girl is cleaning the room all by herself. Remember sometimes the self pronoun can have the meaning even. Shakespeare himself never wrote a better line than that. Oneself is also an intensive pronoun that refers to an indefinite unknown person. For example, to do this difficult task oneself is more rewarding. Verbs and phrases commonly followed by reflexive pronouns. Interrogative pronouns. Interrogative pronouns are used in forming questions. They always precede the verb and they are invariable for number and gender. They are who, whom, whose, which, and what. Examples. Who broke the window? Which do you prefer? Dry sherry or sweet sherry? What have you written? Whose are these gloves? Whom did you see? In these sentences, we have used interrogative pronouns and not interrogative adjectives. As you can see, all of them do not precede any noun. Consider the following examples. Here are some apples. Which one would you like? Or here are some apples. Which ones would you like? In the previous examples, which is an interrogative adjective. It is followed by one. Note also that the interrogative can introduce a direct question or an indirect question. For example, what happened after that? Direct question. He asked me what had happened after that. An indirect question. Another example, who is going to the party? He asked me who was going to the party. Who, whom and whose are used for persons. What is used for things and which is used for persons or things. If we want to ask about persons, we use who to ask about the subject, whom about the object and whose for the possessive. The question who broke that window has this answer. George broke the window. Who asks about the subject? It functions therefore as the subject of the interrogative sentence. Whom did she see? She saw George. In this example, whom does not ask about the subject but about the object. So when you want to ask about the subject, use who. And when you want to ask about the object of the sentence, use whom. To whom did Mary give the letter? She gave it to George. Here we do not ask about the subject Mary who gave the letter to George, but we ask instead about the indirect object George whom the letter was delivered to. The possessive form of the interrogative pronoun is whose. For example, Whose are these gloves? These gloves are mine. He mine is a possessive pronoun and we ask about possessive pronouns. So we use whose. What is generally used for things? It may be singular or plural, subject or object, and it has no possessive form. What is this? What are those strange objects? 
the distinction between who, whom, for persons, and what, for things, can be clearly seen in these sentences. Who broke the window? And what broke the window? Whom did she see? What did she see? It is clear that who broke and what broke the window ask about the subject. The answers could be George broke the window and a stone broke the window. Both pronouns function as subject. Whom did she see and what did she see ask about the object. Possible answers might be she saw George, she saw a ghost, or she saw a dream. What can also stand for an activity or profession. What are you doing? What is that man talking to your father? He's a lawyer. What versus which? Which is used for things and persons, singular or plural, subject or object. It has no possessive case. What is used when we make a selection for more or less unlimited number? Which is used to present the choice from a limited number? Note the difference in the following sentences with interrogative adjectives. What color do you prefer? Which color do you prefer? Green, red or white? What dish do you like? Which dish do you like? Couscous or spaghetti? As you can see, the answers to what are unlimited, but the answers to which are limited within the sentence itself. When it comes to which, as the interrogative pronoun, the choice with which is usually made more explicit by the use of which of. Consider the following examples of interrogative pronouns. Which of you boys can't do this exercise? Which will you have? Tea or coffee? What are you taking in your examination? I'm taking grammar, phonetics and linguistics. Which of them is your best subject? Grammar. What would you like to study in next year's literature course? A Shakespeare play. Very good. Which would you like? Who versus which? Similar to the distinction between what and which when we refer to things, the difference between who and which relates to persons. There is a different implication in each of these two sentences. Who would like to come for a game of football? Which of you would like to come for a game of football? In sentence A, the speaker is prepared to take all who wish to come. In B, the speaker is only prepared to take a certain number. Let's see some common idiomatic expressions. It was so dark I couldn't see who was who. The two twins are so alike I can't tell which is which. He is a clever fellow. He knows what is what. And when you cannot remember the name, oh, there is a Mr. What's his name? It's, um, what do you call it? Indefinite pronouns. This is a group containing the pronouns something, somebody, someone, any, anything, anybody, anyone, all, one, none, nothing, every, other, another, much, less, a few, or a few, a little, or a little, enough, each, either, neither. Just remember that these words can also be determiners and quantifiers when they precede a noun. Examples. Have you any matches? Determiner. Ask John if he has any. Pronoun. At the party, each child was given an orange and a bag of sweets. Determiner. Each of them was also given a present from the Christmas tree. Pronoun. Either of these machines is suitable for the work you want done. Burnout. Neither of my friends has come yet. Burnout. There is a train at 11.30 and one at midday 30. Either train will get you to Oxford in time for the meeting. Determiner. If you don't want either of those, there is another at ten and a half. Burnout. I have two brothers. Both are engineers. Burnout. Some of us agree with that statement. Some disagree. Pronoun. All can be used as a pronoun with the meaning of everything. For example, all are welcome. All is well that ends well. Pronoun. The relative pronouns are who, subjective, whom, objective, whose, possessive, which, and that. They have the same forms 
for singular or plural, masculine or feminine. They take place immediately after the noun they are related to. For example, the man who spoke was my brother. He is a man whom I can trust. He is a man whose word is as good as his bond. In A, who functions as the subject of the verb that follows it, spoke. Since man is the subject of spoke, we replace it with the subjective pronoun who, who spoke. In B, whom functions as the object of the verb trust, I being its subject. Whom here replaces man. But because it functions as object, we use whom and not who in academic English. Equally, whose word shows possession, and it literally means his word or the man's word. We can say his word is as good as his bond. Which versus that? Which, as a relative pronoun, is used only of things or animals. For example, the current, which is very rapid, makes the river dangerous. The dog, which was lost, has been found. Manchester City football team, which played so well last season, has done badly this year. That is invariable, i.e. it may be subjective or objective, singular or plural. It is used for persons or things. For example, Shakespeare is the greatest poet that England has ever had. The plays that he wrote have been performed in almost every country in the world. Have you everything that you needed? Defining versus non-defining relative clauses, or often called restrictive and non-restrictive clauses. For example, the book that I am reading portrays Shakespeare's life. Fort Santa Cruz overlooks Oran, which is an Algerian town. Defining relative clauses, as in A, are the essential part of the meaning of a sentence. They cannot be left out. They define who or what we are talking about. There are no commas before or after them. The relative pronoun that is used in defining clauses because it cannot be used in non-defining clauses. Non-defining relative clauses, as in B, add extra information of secondary importance. They can be left out. Look at all the previous examples with which and that on this slide. Here, the clauses introduced with which are non-defining and are between two commas. They can be omitted. However, those with that are defining clauses and they are not written between two commas. They are essential and important to the meaning of the sentence and they cannot be omitted. Finally, reciprocal pronouns. There are only two reciprocal pronouns. Both of them allow you to make sentences simpler. They are especially useful when you need to express the same general idea more than once each other and one another. Reciprocal pronouns are easy to use. When you want to refer to two people, you will normally use each other. When referring to more than two people, for example, the students in a lecture hall, you will normally use one another. Please consider the following examples. Maria and John gave each other gold rings on their wedding day. Terry and Jack were talking to each other in the hallway. We give each other gifts during the holidays. The students congratulated one another after giving practice speeches. The kids spent the afternoon kicking the ball to one another. The defendants blamed one another for the crime they were charged with. Now we come to the end of this video. As I said earlier, this is a revision of the most common characteristics of pronouns in English, and I hope you will find it helpful. Thank you for watching.